So you want to be a truck driver and you don't know where to start. Well, came to the right place. Today I'll be giving you some tips and tricks on how to get your CDL, become a truck driver, and the better companies to go train with. So stick around and find on out. All right, guys, Trucker Chris here. So obviously you're sticking around on the video to learn or to figure out some of the better companies or any company really to get your CDL at. Um, there is a plethora of companies that will help you get your CDL. Don't mind the, the smoke behind me. I've been vaping in my truck. Um, I'd venture to say almost every trucking company out there will offer some sort of training. And the ones that don't are usually the ones that I will only work at. And the reason why is once you get your CDL training, you want to stay away from the companies that offer it. And the reason why is you're just a number to them. Um, a lot of them will basically treat you like crap. You know, you have a, a, a dispute with your dispatcher, with your fleet manager, with, with pretty much anybody. And their only response is, oh, well, guess what? I'll have... I'll have Billy Joe over there who's coming out of truck driving school. I'll pay him 41 cents a mile to drive your truck. Yeah, kind of sucks, but kind of, kind of start somewhere, right? A lot of my friends, when they did their training, um, they worked for beer companies, um, beer distribution companies. Uh, for example, one of my friends, uh, Ted did his training at a beer company in Austin and the way it kind of worked out was he worked as a merchandiser helper for about six or seven months and they were like hey we need another driver pay for your training we'll have so and so teach you how to drive a truck he's been driving for x amount of years boom got his cdl never had to do otr driving um probably one of the easier ways to do it one of the harder jobs to do i did it for a while uh, back when i was you know 100 pounds lighter but it's, it's a lot easier to do that. The biggest training company that was around for a while was actually Yellow Freight. Um, and they unfortunately just declared bankruptcy. Yellow Freight kind of did it the same way. You'd work the dock for a while, you'd move up, and then they would train you how to get your CDL. And it was an all union company. From what I hear, there was a lot of bad and good with the company, but not my thing. They don't exist anymore. What's, what's, why even hash it up, right? So, got a list, all right? So on the top of that list is a company I've heard a lot of great things about, and the reason there's a lot of great things is because they actually treat you like a person. Kind of unheard of for a moderate to big company. It's also kind of unheard of for a company, it's actually really unheard of for a company that trains CDL drivers. And the name of that company is Raider Express. Um, they're based out of my home state, uh, up in Hazlitt, Texas. So here's something that's really cool with them. They have a no contract CDL training. Completely unheard of. It's amazing to even have that because contracts are how these trucking companies keep you with them, basically. Um, so when they say no contract, what that means is you're not under obligation to stay with them after you get your CDL. And so you do your classroom work, you say you do three months with your mentor, and they say, all right, man, you've done your three months, you're good to go, get out of here, get your own truck. And you decide, hey, Raider is not the place I wanna be, I wanna go work for this company. Peace, no problem, have a good one. Good luck. If you do that in any other company with a contract, uh, you're pretty well screwed. You won't be able to get a job anywhere else. And uh, most of the time, you're going to be out a lot of money if you do that. The other cool part about them is they pay during your classroom work. So when they say classroom, that's literally what it means, is you're going to be sitting in a room with an instructor, a whole bunch of other, other driver trainer trainees, and you're going to be basically going over the, the DOT handbook on your, your test that you got to take. And it's going to be a very long, repetitive course, and it really is boring, but you need to pay a lot of attention to it. Um, the classroom work, the classroom program is about four weeks from start to finish, and 
The way it works is during your classroom time, they're gonna teach you how to pass the permit test. Then they're gonna teach you how to drive a truck while you're under your permit. And when they say drive a truck, it's gonna be, you know, the, the main things you have to do. How to properly pull forward, make turns, not hit curbs, parallel park, be able to back up straight. Don't ask me why the hell we got a parallel park. Only time I ever did it was when I delivered building materials in downtown Austin. That's the only time I ever had to parallel park semi. Other than that, not like I'm down in downtown New York parallel parking on the side of the road to make a delivery. Um, one of the pitfalls for me with Raider, though, is their governed speed on their trucks. Their speed is governed out to 58 miles an hour, which is super, super slow. Um... My company, for example, Crete, governs her trucks out to 68 on cruise control. And uh, it's a little bit faster than most of the trucking companies. Um, most of them that I have listed actually are usually governed at 65 or below. Um, one of them is actually governed at 62 as well, uh, which is kind of slow, but, you know, it's what it is. And they, they say, oh, we do it for safety, we do it for safety. What it really is, they do it for insurance. Uh, the insurance providers will tell them, hey, we'll, we'll take off X amount if you govern your trucks out to a certain speed to lessen the severity of an accident. Tell you what, even if you're doing 58 miles an hour, you hit somebody weighing 75,000 pounds, it's going to be a nasty accident no matter what, even if you're going 35. So keep that in mind. But if you were going to do your CDL training, Raider Express is the one place I would really push you all towards. Got a few more companies I want to talk about here, and this is going to be a quick overview on these. So, the next one I would say would be CRST. And I could already hear the old dogs rolling their eyes, going, rawr, rawr. Well, CRST is actually a halfway decent company. They're not the world's best. They're halfway decent. Have a couple of friends who work for them, but they work more on the white glove side, which is basically their, their diamond drivers. They take care of those guys really well. Um, that's the main experience from, from hearing about them that I have, but their training program, from what I understand, is actually really, really good. Won't say it's the best, but it's actually good. So with that being said, if you go do your training at CRST, you're going to be under a 10 month contract. And around what I said about that contract, you walk away, you owe everything. Um, if you walk away from it, you're going to be paying for your physical and your hotel and uh, your bus fare, tuition, all that. As long as you stay within that contract, all that's covered 100%. Um, during your training, you're going to be making 36 cents per mile, about the industry average for a training job. Uh, it's low, but you know, you got to think about it. You just now got your CDL. So the way you could equate that is 36 cents per mile for every hundred miles you drive, you can earn about $36. Not a whole lot, but so you got a driver trainer with you and, and you can average with him 2000 miles a week. Well, you're looking at earning a little over 60, about 64, sorry, $640 or so. Not a whole lot, but it's kind of what you're going to expect out there on the road. Like for example, I was making a 22 cents per mile when I did my training which is absurd to think about now, especially with what I'm getting paid now. So, um, yeah, I I would suggest them as well, CRSC. Definitely to be at the top of my list of like, hey, go work for this place. Uh, the next one after that, I could really hear the guys, you know, just rolling their eyes now. Stevie Wonder Institute for Trucking. And if you don't know what that is, Swift Transportation. They have a very long contract, so be aware on that one. It is a 26 month contract. It is huge, but you don't pay for anything during that contract as long as you stay and finish it out. They require 300 hours with a mentor. And so that could be between phase one and phase two. You have to average, you have to get at least 300 hours between the two. Um, otherwise you can't get your own truck. All expenses are paid, so that includes meals, hotel, uh, bus fare, pretty much anything from that kind of aspect. So, would I suggest them? Yeah, I still would. As many as many bad things you hear about Swift, they're they're still a halfway decent company. 
Um, honestly, I was actually going to go work for Swift before I came to work for Creek. And the reason why is because uh, in Temple, Texas, they have a, uh, a Walmart distribution center there that they, they basically operate out of. And they had a pretty pretty easy route basically hauling for Walmart loads. And um, I kind of decided to go with Creed over anybody just because I heard a lot of good things about them. And that's where I'm still at now. So been two and a half years with them. So, you know, sorry, two years with them. Um, so would I suggest them? Yeah. The next two, I can't really suggest to you, but I'm going to list them anyway, because they'll help you get your training. So the one that I, I would still kind of say, yeah, go for it, whatever, is PAM Transport. PAM Transport. All their trucks are governed out to 62 to 63 miles an hour. A lot of their trucks are Peterbilts. Um, some of the guys really like that, you know, but they're not special. You know, Peterbilts aren't the most special truck on the world. Trust me. I drive a Freightliner Cascadia, and I love it. You know, kind of feels like driving a Cadillac to be honest with you so with Pam you're under a six month contract um long as you stay within the contract everything's paid you know of course I don't want to beat a dead horse um your classroom time is going to be one to three weeks and your time with your mentor is going to be about two to four months um during your time there they're going to pay for your hotel they're not going to pay for your food you have to cover the expense of that but they will offer you a hundred dollar a week stipend during your classroom training. And so basically what the stipend is, is a um, hundred bucks, go to the store, go to the restaurant, do whatever. But once you're out, you're out. So just kind of be aware of that. Not a lot of money to survive off of now at all. Personally, I think they need to do a cost of living increase on that stipend, you know, maybe make it $150 a week. Um, I, I have a hard time saying go go there to do your training because they're not the best in the world. But the next one, I could tell you without a doubt, do not do your training there. But if you happen to go there, I wish you the best of luck. But that would be CR England. That's where I did my training a decade ago. And it is a company I will never work for again. Probably one of the worst companies I've ever worked for. And if you want a whole video on why I don't like them, let me know in the comments and I'll go through the whole entire thing about my training with them. Um, so with CR England, you go under a nine month contract and if you're a military veteran coming in on their program, it's a six month contract. Um, you're gonna be with a mentor between one and four months and your classroom time is gonna be about a week long. My biggest issue with CR England when I did my training was I was a brand new, and I mean brand new driver, had my CDL for all of a week, if even that. And as soon as I sat down in the truck, my trainer is back here sleeping. And we went to a team operation as soon as I started. I had no effing clue what I was doing driving, man. And it, it kind of sounds ridiculous if you've never been in the trucking field, because some people are like, it's just driving. How hard can it be? That's the problem. You're driving something huge that you don't know what you're doing with kind of terrifying and they say you know all oh, to grow hair on your chest that's cool but what happens when i come up to a six percent grade and i've never done it before going down a mountain and i miss a gear or i don't even know that i need to shift gears or whatever and next thing you know i kill both of us um if you want a prime example of it look up the donner uh donner pass crash it's an 18 miller crash that happened where the trainer was in the back of the truck and the driver was sleeping and they went off the side of Donner Pass, killed both of them, rolled the truck over, killed both of them. Absolutely terrible incident that could have been avoided 100%. Um, I did my training up in Dallas and I don't think they have that school anymore because last time I passed by the school there, I think it was a Transcasa, which is another trucking company. Um, so I believe that they do all their training in Salt Lake. Um, I've been to the Salt Lake Terminal. It's, you know, woo big deal, you know, which most trucking companies are just kind of like, oh, cool, whatever. Um, it's not a company I, I would suggest you ever go work for. There's a lot of pitfalls to it. And like I said, if you want a whole entire explanation behind it, hit me up in the comments and I will give you the full explanation in a video. 
So I also want you all to be aware that every single company, no matter what company it is, is going to require you to do a drug test. And that is a DOT requirement. But then a lot of these companies are going to take it a step further and make you do a hair follicle test. So if you have done any type of illicit drugs within the past, I'd say six to eight months, don't try to get your CDL. Um, if you pop positive for drugs on the hair follicle test, that will not follow you on your DOT report. But a lot of trucking companies talk to each other. So uh, DOT FMCSA does not recognize hair follicle test as a drug test. So if you fail one of those, the it won't show up on the clearinghouse. But doesn't stop Pam from putting in on the DAC report failed a drug uh, hair follicle drug test whatever or a a any type of uh, trucking report that you failed a hair follicle drug test and that will follow you on a, the trucking side but it won't follow you on the clearinghouse and basically the, the explanation behind the clearinghouse is um, that you passed all your urinalysis tests so your seven uh, I think it's a seven panel urine test um, so if you've done anything like that don't don't do it yet man just kind of take yourself a few months get yourself nice and cleaned up whatever i don't judge anybody for what they do i honestly i feel like hey we live in america you do whatever the hell you want to do i don't give a crap i also be warned when it comes down to cbd and i think it's what delta 8 and delta 10 whatever whatever they have now you don't want to use those as well especially the hair follicle test you will pop positive and that that can be a career ruiner it really can especially if you pop positive on your dot drug test because that will follow you and that will screw you for you know between three years to seven years a lot of trucking companies won't hire you with a failed drug test and the ones that do you don't want to work for usually they they know that they're the only place that will take you on and they will treat you like that as well so kind of keep that in the back of your mind on that one also another thing with a lot of these companies is you're not going to get paid very much while you're in training your pay is going to be super low which is to be expected they're not going to put a lot of money and effort towards you while you're in training because they don't know if you're going to make it the next month two months three months whatever Sorry about the noise. My truck's starting up. Um, also, with that being said, if you have a family, if you are a family man, if you have kids, you have a wife, you love being around people, whatever, this is not the industry for you. This industry will destroy relationships. It will destroy friendships. It will destroy a lot of things when it comes down to it you when you're when you're doing your training specifically you're going to be gone in or between three weeks up to your whole entire training period away from home and it's no different than a, 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 a somebody in the military doing their tour of duty overseas really sucks being gone away from home that long and it's really hard on a family um, and if if your family can withstand that Skype, Snapchat, um, Facebook video calls, whatever, it really helps out. It really, really does. So, um, another thing that you need to watch out for is when you talk to recruiters, they will lie through their teeth to get you through that door. Recruiters are paid on the amount of drivers they get in the door. And so, say that a, a recruiter probably makes a hundred bucks per drivers to get in the door and so if they get 20 drivers in that door well guess what you just bought that recruiter a really nice steak dinner for the week so don't believe anything they say even even with the company i work for now when i talked to the recruiter i was just kind of like you know in one ear and out the other you know okay whatever you know don't believe what they say they're going to tell you everything in the world to get you to come to your training and that will include You'll get to see the, the, the U.S. You'll get to see the awesome landmarks, Niagara Falls, all that stuff. You might see that you're driving past it, but, you know, good luck stopping to take a picture of it. Um, 
realistically though it is a fun industry to be in i really love driving trucks like i've told everybody you draw my blood you're going to see a bunch of little peterbilts freight liners and, and internationals rolling through my veins so i i really do enjoy it but it can be hard on a family and thankfully my significant other is strong will and can deal with the fact that i'm gone i'm usually out a week to two weeks at a time so it really helps out doing that but during your training like i said you're going to be gone for a while so make sure your significant other is very well aware of that so with that being said guys if you decide to to become a truck driver and get your cdl i wish the best of luck to you i hope you do a damn good job at it and i hope to see you on the road one day all right guys this is trucker chris wish you all the best like comment subscribe and hit me up in the comments you all want to see a different video all right guys have a good one